around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Yeah, what is it, Chester? You know Tiller Evans? Oh, uh, the mule skinner? Yes, sir. What about him? He's standing out there in the street. Looks like he's about to head down Santa Fe Trail with a big load of supplies. Well? Well, I, I'm just wondering what a nice, sweet girl like Mavis McLeod can be doing with a man like that. You, uh, jealous, Chester? Oh, no, sir. But Tiller's such a mean, ugly old bull... Oh, well, look at him. Look at that. What? Well, he just hit her, Mr. Dillon. What? Slapped her right in the face. He did. I told you he was mean. Well, that's a fine way to tell a girl goodbye. Yeah. Look, he hit her again. Yeah. Oh, I hate a man that picks on women, Mr. Dillon. Oh, poor little thing. She's crying. I sure am glad we're doing something about this. Not you when I get back, Mavis. I'll really whip you. You understand? No. Don't tell her. Don't. That's enough, tell her. What are you butting in for, Marshal? Let go of her. This ain't no business of yours. I said let go of her. Okay. I ain't hurting her none. Am I, Mavis? Am I? You see? You got no right to mix in people's private business, Marshal. This your wagon and mules, Tiller? Of course it is. Then get going. Right now. I'm going. But if I wasn't in a hurry, I'd have this out with you right here. i see you when I get back next week, Marshal. Well, Mavis, you remember what I told you now. Well, do you? Yes. What's going on here, anyway? Mavis, has this beast been after you again? Don't you call me names, Kitty. I'll fix you same as her. I can't tell you from one of your mules, Tiller. Now look at him. Leave him alone, Kitty. You get up on that wagon box, Tiller. Now. You wait like you're back. He's been hurting you again, hasn't he, Mavis? I hate him. Well, what are you doing with him if you hate him so much? Oh, he's a bully, Chester. She's afraid of him. At least he'll be away for a few days now. I hope he never comes back. Well, you come with me, honey. Thanks, Kitty. I'll make you some coffee. Uh, come on, Chester. Poor gal. You think old Tiller's going to start trouble when he gets back? I don't care if he does, Chester. No, I feel the same way. Only he's a mite too big for me. What? Look, there's somebody here. Are you Marshal Dillon, sir? I am. My name is Marcus France. Well, how do you do? Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Mr. Proudfoot? Mr. Proudfoot. Well, how do you do, Mr. France? I witnessed that scene in the street there, Marshal. That man should be horsewhipped. He sure should. Such a pretty girl. And she's an awful nice girl, too, Mr. France. I'm sure she is. Well, Marshal, I don't want to take up your time. I thought it best we have a talk before I uh, go to work here. Well, you're a stranger in town, huh? I arrived this morning. I'm from Philadelphia, Marshal, and I'm a gambler. Uh huh. They gamble much in Philadelphia? Men gamble everywhere, sir. The weakness is universal. I suppose. 
Well, you can gamble here all you like, as long as you don't run a crooked game. That's precisely what I wanted to see you about, Marshal. What? It's not that I'm dishonest, but I've often been accused of being so. Sometimes makes for unpleasantness. Around here, it usually leads to gunplay. Yes, of course. I can handle myself on that score. Mr. France, I never heard a gambler yet come out and admit he was a crook, but if he is, sooner or later, either he or somebody else winds up dead. That's why I don't tolerate anything but an honest game in Dodge. You impugn my honor, sir? He what? Never mind, Chester. Now, just what is it you want to tell me, Mr. France? I am a gentleman, Marshal. Well, if you are, you're about the first one that ever rode into this town. But for the time being, I'll believe you. Thank you, sir. And don't be so touchy about your honor. It'll just get you into trouble. I'm afraid I haven't explained myself, Marshal. There are reasons why I've often been dis- accused of dishonesty. Oh, like what? A bad loser will grasp at any straw to save face. He'll even call the deal crooked. Yeah, I've seen that happen. There are likely to be many losers in a game I run. Is that so? That may sound like bragging, Marshal, but I possess great skill at cards. Also, I'm extremely lucky. I see. Now, you may send a man to watch the deal, if you like. Perhaps Mr. Proudfoot here. Oh, sure. Well, I'd be glad to come. No. To... You run your game, Mr. France. If it's crooked, I'll find out soon enough. All right. But uh, don't get the idea you're going to start shooting down every man that bothers you, no matter how good you might be with a gun. Do you include self-defense in justifiable homicide, Marshal? If it is self-defense. But you take to killing people, even in self-defense, and I'll have to run you out of town. Oh, uh, hello, Matt. <clears throat> Chester. Hi, Hi Doc. Doc. Fellas been trying to sell me a new horse, Matt. I thought you'd uh, take a look at it for me when, when, when you're through here. Well, uh, sure, Doc. Uh, this is Marcus France, uh, Doc Adams. I'm pleased to meet you, Doctor. Doc will do. Of course. Where are you from, mister? Philadelphia, sir. Not much sun there. Sun? Well, you look peaked. I've had a long journey, sir. Well, now, when you get rested up, you come see me, and I'll give you some good tonic. One dollar a bottle, Mr. France. He gave me some once. <laughs> I appreciate your interest, Doc. Perhaps I will call on you one day. Any time. Now, yes. if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll be going. Goodbye, Mr. France. Goodbye. What's he doing in Dodge? He's a gambler, Doc. Why? Oh, I don't know. He seems sort of out of place around here. He says he's a gentleman. Oh, maybe that's it. Well, I've heard that easy talk before. I will soon find out just what he really is. think a restaurant like this could serve something besides beans with their meat, wouldn't you now, man? Honest. No, you got potatoes, Doc. I'm sick of them, too. Potatoes. Why don't you get married, Doc, and then you could eat fine. <laughs> oh, the last woman that wanted to marry me was a hog and hominy cook. <laughs> I don't think she ever heard of any other kind of food. Why didn't you ever take her out? Oh, take her. Oh, man. That was in Arkansas. <laughs> she didn't even wear shoes. You old liar. No, 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 no. I swear. <laughs> her pappy had a saying that every woman's entitled to a baby and a bonnet. But shoes were never mentioned in that house. <laughs> you must have made a handsome couple. Oh, well, of course. I was somewhat younger then. <laughs> a lot younger, I hope. I was, I was. And <laughs> good thing, too. They lived in a place called Rip Shin Thicket. <laughs> The court in that girl was a day's work, man, believe me. <clears throat> Doc, why don't you finish your supper? I'm not even listening to you. Oh, and she had a brother called Spotted Jack, and he claimed he never slept in a bed his whole life. <laughs> or took a bath. There must be something else we can talk about, Doc. Oh, man, well, anything at all, anything at all. Gee. Well, what are you going to do about that gambler, that Marcus France, for example? Well, I don't know yet, Doc. Well, he's been here for a week, and he's already killed a man. That was self-defense, all right. But if it happens again, he's through. 
You think he's dealing honest, Matt? Uh, so far he is. Uh, hello, oh. Mr. Dillon. Doc? Well, Chester. Chester. Uh, I've been over at the Texas Trail. Miss Kitty asked me to find you. Huh? Trouble? I don't know. But she said it was really important. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Doc, uh, you didn't tell me that Arkansas girl's name. Oh, well, it's a funny thing, Matt. Uh, well, she never told me. <laughs> Hello, Kitty. You wanted to see me, huh? Sit down, Matt. All right. It's, um, it's about Marcus France over there. Oh? Uh-huh. He's going to be killed, Matt. What? Tiller Evans is due back tomorrow. Well, what's Tiller got to do with it? You remember the day he left when you stopped him from slapping Mavis around? Mavis? You mean Mavis and France are... She... Says she's in love with him, Matt, and she doesn't care who knows it. Underneath, she's scared to death. Oh. Uh, well, does France know about Tiller? Oh, uh, Mavis told him. Matt, I don't know what you think about him, but to me, he's the most decent man I've met in a long time. Well, he may be, Kitty. But he's sure causing a lot of trouble. Well, Tiller's going to kill him. I know he is. You gotta stop it, Matt. Kitty, how did a nice girl like Mavis get started with Tiller in the first place? Oh, she didn't have much choice. The big ape just moved in on her and took over. She's awful young, Matt, and pretty helpless. Well, if she and France are so much in love, why don't they get married? Huh. I've thought of that, too. So has Mavis, by the way. Oh. Well, maybe France isn't so honorable after all, Kitty. Ah, give him time, Matt. Tomorrow isn't very far off. Before I said you're cheating, and I meant it. No man can call me a cheat. I just did, didn't I? Stay here, Kitty. Yeah. You better leave the game, mister. You're cheating, you're dealing crooked cards. You've got a gun, mister. Now use it. Leave that gun where it is. Now, France, I warned you once. You heard what he said, Marshal. I meant it, too. He's dealing crooked cards. Can you prove it, mister? I don't have to prove it. He's got over $100 of mine. I ain't want to hand to this table in an hour. See, Marshal? Just like I told you, some men can't take losing. Did you see him cheating, mister? I didn't have to. Look at that pile of money. You talk pretty loose for a man that doesn't have any more to go on than that. Now, why don't you forget about it and get out of here? Forget about it? You heard me. This game is closed for the rest of the night. Just as you say, Marshal. Gentlemen, the game is closed. I'll see you later. Oh, France. You know, egging men into a draw and then calling it self-defense is going to make your stay in Dodge mighty brief. I'll have to chance that, Marshal. How many men have you killed because of that tender pride of yours, huh? Well, it doesn't matter. But there's something I would like to know. What are you going to do about Tiller Evans? Oh, you've heard. Yeah. First time in my life, Marshal. I love a woman. Then why don't you get her out of here? While there's still time. Run away from a fight? Tiller's a pretty tough man. You mean he might kill me? And where would that leave Mavis? Sorry, Marshal. I've got to stay. You know, France, I can't figure you at all. There's something wrong with you, and I don't know what it is. You'll find out, Marshal. Soon enough. return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, tomorrow afternoon on Stage Struck, Mike Wallace and CBS Radio cover the opening of the new Broadway musical, The Girl in Pink Tights. Its star, Jean Mayer, Charles Goldner, and others in the cast will be heard. Stage Struck on most of these same stations tomorrow afternoon, opening The Girl in Pink Tights, 
a promising newcomer full of Sigmund Romberg's music. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. now, Mr. Dillon. Oh, uh, what won't be long, Chester? Cowboy just told me he passed Tiller Evans a couple miles down the trail. He'll be driving into town directly. Oh. Uh, Chester, hmm? what do you think of Marcus France? Him? Well, sir, for a fact, I'm dubitated. What? Well, he seems like such a nice fellow, but he just won't do what he plain order. Like? Get married with Mavis McLeod like she wants him to. That'd stop old Tiller. Uh, maybe. Now, the very least he could do is run off with her. Mr. Dillon, I just hate to think what'll become of that little girl if Tiller gets her. Well, one way or another, Chester, there's about to be a killing. And I gotta try to stop it. How are you gonna do it? Well, there's a stage north in half an hour. Yeah, but Mr. France won't go. Chester, hmm? you know where Mavis lives, don't you? Yes, sir. All right, go get her. I'll put her on the stage. I'll meet you there. Okay, Mr. Gilbert. Now, you're going to have to hurry. Come in. Thank you. I am honored, sir. Would you care for a glass of whiskey? Uh, no. No, thank you. The very best money can buy. France. Hmm? Tiller Evans will be here shortly. You'll be looking for me, Marshal, not I for him. Well, anyway, it happens there'll be a killing. One sinner less in the world. I'm a lawman, Franz, not a preacher. Yes, of course. Now, Marshal, I have no quarrel with this man, Tiller. Why don't you talk to him? Well, he's not the kind of a man you can talk to. Well, then put him in jail for disturbing the peace or something. It'll be too late by the time the peace is disturbed. France, there's a stage leaving Dodge in a few minutes. Is there, Marshal? Mavis is going to be on it. What? Now, if you're the gentleman you say you are, you'll be on it with her. You're making a mistake, Marshal. Well, I've made mistakes before. No use arguing with you, is there? Not if you told me what's holding you back, there might be. Shall we say I never run from a fight? I don't question that. But this time it's different. I don't believe that's your reason. You say goodbye to Mavis for me, Marshal? No. I've uh, just decided you're going with her. I'm sorry. I'm not. Careful, Marshal. I'm always careful. No, you... Where's Mavis, Chester? She's inside the coach. I'm keeping an eye on her. All right, open the door, Chester. France is going with her. Yes, sir. Marcus. Ah. Marcus, what happened? He hasn't hurt, Mavis. But he'll be out for a while yet. Why are you doing this, Marshal? 
Well, I'm a gambler too, Mavis. And I'm taking a chance that man here of yours is what he says he is. He's a fine man. Well, goodbye, Mavis. And good luck. All right, driver. Yeah. Get this stage out of here. Sure, Marshal. Hold on, there. What? Get going, driver. Hold on. Go on. Come back there. Stop that stage. It's too late, Teller. You, you done this, Marshal. Now take it easy. That pinhorn. Run off with my gal. And you helped him. She wanted to go. Nobody steals nothing from Tiller Evans. I'll find him and I'll kill him. Both of them. No, you won't. Oh, I've got to kill you first, eh? Why don't you go get drunk and forget about it, Tiller? You helped him. Don't do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Chester. Yes, sir. Take care of this, will you? Yes, sir. A couple of you fellas, give me a hand here. We'll drag him over at that trough. Leon, you and Cook. Matt? Yeah. Is Tiller bad hurt? No, you'll be all right, Doc. Not sad of being a little lonely. Mavis is going to be a little lonely, too. What? Marcus Franz did come to my office, Matt. What are you talking about, Doc? His lungs. That's why he came west. I wouldn't give him over a couple of months at the most. Uh, Mavis just isn't very lucky, is she, Doc? No. No, she isn't. But thanks to you, at least they'll have what time there is. He wouldn't have left with her any other way. Yeah. I guess Marcus really is a gentleman. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Eleanor Cannon, John Daner, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Monday night... CBS Radio Suspense stars Ronald Reagan. The drama is an unusual one titled Circumstantial Terror. In it, a man is on trial for a killing he didn't commit, and the guilty man is on the jury. Tension mounts and mounts until the suspense is almost beyond belief. Don't miss Suspense, Monday night, over most of these same stations. George Walsh speaking. Stay tuned now for Gangbusters, which follows in a few minutes over most of these same stations. For more outstanding drama, remember the Lux Radio Theater, Monday nights on the CBS Radio Network.